Potter's Journal, Summer Living Time, 2019. Okay, oil pours. Um, I'm going to start with a simple one. Uh, somebody used the Batijo as an oil pour. I've um, developed, developed the design to have them even with uh, spouts, with handles, with stoppers in the top. But we are just going to do it the easy way today with the spouts. I thought about a half a dozen of these just to see if it works. And start easy and work up from there. I feel like I'm now getting to where I'm developing my own line of pottery. Let's see what's going on in the studio today. Olive oil pours. I'm making what I'm going to consider a medium size. pound and a quarter. Check the thickness on the bottom. We'll bring it down a little thinner and compact it with the rib. And okay, I'm bringing in by pushing together here and this one stabilizing the top. mug. Okay, or I should say cylinder. And I've seen these made smaller, which it seems would be uh, just um, something that would need to be refilled constantly. And larger, but I'm not considering this a storage jar, but a serving jar, so I'm going to say I found the medium size to be just right. Okay, and after the cylinder, I want to bolt these out in the center. Also bringing the bottom in a little bit too with the rib and cleaning up the throw marks. And I change what I take to the farmer's market uh, seasonally in the spring. Um, I took batter bowls for pancakes and syrup jugs for maple syrup. Okay, and it seems like um, everybody seems to have a different method of collaring things in. Um, as you bring this in, it sometimes comes out here, so hands down there to support it. I like to get a finger on the inside, too. And that seems to stabilize the top again a bit. If you go too fast, it can have a tendency to buckle. And if the clay is too stiff, um, it has a tendency to buckle even faster. And then this needs to be thinned out. Because as you compact it, it's getting thicker. And this just looks magic if you see it done in video in fast motion. But for me, this does take some time and patience. Okay, even though I've done from, yeah, part way through on a, a jug series. Um, this is, in a sense, yeah, just a small jug.
and I am using this as a, the stopper as a guide. It's uh, narrower on the bottom, tapered down. Okay, when it just about touches, um, that's the yeah, size I'm looking for. So I did need that to come in a little bit more, and this one is going to need a good trim on the top. Okay, and I'm not sure what I did there. Um, I'll also come and start to round off the outside and the inside with the needle so that then it just needs to be rounded off with the leather or your sponge. Okay, and narrower the yes, till it just barely touches. Okay, it will that out. Okay, and okay, I want a narrower bottom. I can use this very sharp rib to both cut in. Okay, so I'm both um, pruning, yes, um, and pushing in at the same time. And then cleaning up the throw marks and rounding out the top till we get in a shape and a form that um, yeah is just nice to grip on its own. Um, I don't want to add a handle. You could add a handle if um, you're able to get um, the money out of it. Um, yeah, put more into it and add in a handle. But I'm keeping these as simple as possible, making yeah, there's not uh, they're not going to be trimmed. We've got to get this going fast because we are going glug glug glug, and we need something that'll pour a fine stream. Gonna use some. Um, gonna do some with just a single glaze. And with the slip on here, <laughs> okay, and I've been doing these without the slip up until now. Let's see if we can get these off by grabbing them down low. Ooh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to do about a dozen of these. Okay, and this just isn't working. Glug, glug, glug on our Israeli salad. This is something I haven't done in my three years back to pottery making. Let's go bowling. I've never gone bowling in my life. Oh, no. And I don't think I want to do this again. Okay, but we will be doing this again. Okay, time to start over. So we are doing a grilled ratatouille, a French. I think it's supposed to be roasted, but sometimes I think uh, they are put in a, a pan on the stove. Today we're doing it grilled. I guess this is not a time to waste an opportunity. Let's see how I'm doing. Um, okay, uh, that's not too bad. Um, I pulled in uh, a um, Warren McKenzie piece out of storage that had an extremely thin bottom. This one's a bit thinner. Um, and um, a little bit thick on the bottom, but, uh, you know, nothing to... Oh, that one almost looks like we could have... Um, saved it, but, um, okay, okay, yeah, this one we did get a little thin right there. So, let's check 
got these two as well. Oh, well, might be a little bit late for them. Okay, so these will need some good wedging. I'm used to using my clay straight out of the bag. Um, Okay, so we will start with a great big ceramic bowl and the farsales, peppers, okay, eggplants, melanzane, whatever you call it, aubergine, zucchini. Tomatoes, onions, and a chicken. And we will give this a stir. Stop back to see those oil pours finished so we don't have to go glug, glug, glug anymore. This is our okay, is it, it on? It looks nice the way it is. Yeah, I'm. And we'll get that spoon too out of the bottom. Okay. And don't forget the confetti! <laughs>